All right, hey AP Chemistry, I wanted to also make a video to kind of help support you with the pre-lab questions. These are questions that you are gonna to have to understand for this unit, unit six on thermodynamics and thermochemistry and for this lab. Um, so question one, you're gonna get from our slides and from the notes here on how to look at enthalpy of solutions. There are three things that happen when a solution dissolves. First, there's energy required to break the solid that's dissolving or spread it apart. There's also energy required to separate the solvent, which is water. Both of these numbers are positive. And then when the solid dissolves in the, sol in the solvent, there's a little bit of energy or a lot of bit of energy that can be released. So we have two delta, we have three delta H's here. Two delta H's are related to separating the solid particles and the solvent particles. And the third delta H is about putting them together. Now, for the, if the third delta H, which means the, the solution coming together, releases a lot more energy than both of these numbers combined, it will over, overall be exothermic, and the solid really wants to be dissolved in, in the solvent. If this only releases a little bit of energy, and it actually requires more energy to separate the solid particles and the solvent particles, it'll be overall endothermic, and it'll actually feel colder. Whereas if it's overall exothermic, it'll feel warmer. So that's how you're going to answer question number one. Um, and the reason why it would be exothermic is if they have the most similar intermolecular forces. So that's kind of helping you there. For question two, I'm going to just show you how you're going to set this up. For question two, you're just going to use the Q of water or QAQ solution, which is going to be MC delta T. They gave you the, ma the volume or the mass of the water, and they have an initial temperature and a final temperature. All right, you're going to ignore this 25 grams of solid. It's not part of the water. It's doing something to the water. But for question number two, you're going to have the 60 milliliters, which is 60 grams of water. The specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per degree Celsius. And then the delta T is T final minus T initial. And then for question two, sorry, for question three, um, you're actually going to have to calculate Q cal because it gave you C cal. And I mentioned this in a previous video. And you're going to add this to Q of the water. QAQ plus Q cal. All right, so in question two, the calorimeter was found to have a heat capacity of 8.20 joules per grams degree Celsius. 8.20 joules per gram degree Celsius. If a correction is included to account for the heat absorbed by the calorimeter, what is the heat of solution? So basically, you're going to take this number, this Q, the C cal that they gave you, multiply it times the delta T in the previous question, and you're going to get a Q cal, and you're going to add it to QAQ that you got in question two. So this is question number two, question number three energy, and you're going to add those two together and negate them, and that's how you're going to get Q of solution. So again, you're getting QAQ from question number two. You're just using mass, which is 60 grams. C is 4.18. And delta T is 25.3 minus 21.4. And then you're going to use the same delta T in question number three. And you're going to use the C of the calorimeter that they gave you. And you're going to get Q cal. And you're going to add that to QAQ and negate that to get the Q of solution. And then it says in question four, the solid in question two was aluminum sulfate. Calculate the molar heat of solution. And they want it in kilojoules per mole. So basically, for question four, that shouldn't say equal. If I want, um, if I want delta H of solution, it's going to be Q of solution, which you're getting in question number three. And you're dividing it by moles of aluminum sulfate. And again, they told you in question number two that you have 25 grams of aluminum sulfate. So you're going to have to, oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. You're going to have to figure out the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. Oops, that's written wrong. Al2SO4, 3. You're going to have to find the molar mass of aluminum sulfate divided by this grams to get moles. And that's going to help you get the delta H's solution in joules per mole. And then if I want it in kilojoules, you divide by... 1,000. All right, so this is a quick help 
for your pre-lab questions. If you're still a little bit confused at how I did this quickly, or if you want some more help, you could easily ask me in class.